Mark Parrish. Great story. Compelling and rich. So, Mark, you were pretty goddamn good at high school hockey, correct? Uh, I suppose so, yeah. I was recruited by some colleges. So you had full-ride scholarships to which schools? I mean, the list uh, might be long, but off yeah, the top of your uh, head, uh, go. Uh, Michigan, Maine, Wisconsin, St. Cloud, North Dakota, Colorado College, Denver. So far, all you have. Them, you have so far, well, you said all of them, but so far, it, you have except not. Except for one. You have not named the University of Minnesota. And last nope. time I checked, you played high school hockey 20 minutes from the University of Minnesota. And quite a few of my teammates were wearing maroon and gold, actually, mm-hmm. at that time, too. So I wonder why what the hell? Mark Parrish didn't end up being a golden gopher hockey player. Untold story. Here we go. Well. The funny thing is, is even at the time I went in for an unofficial visit, you had official visits and unofficial visits. I was trying to decide who my five official visits were. I think it was five. Mm-hmm. And uh, since it was 20 minutes away, I decided to just kind of go in and talk to Woog and maybe maybe I wouldn't have to waste necessarily an official visit or see how his interest level was. And he had called and we set up a meeting. Uh, we, my, my dad and myself went into uh, his office down at the university and listened to him more or less rip my game apart for two and a half hours. Just <laughs> oh. two, two and a half hours? Two, two and a half hours. That two and a half helped. hours. I was too small as a centerman. Never played center in my life. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he said I was at too center, slow. Right? Yeah, yeah. Too slow to get around on the big ice. Uh, you know, my hands weren't good enough. I didn't know if you could see vision, you know, keep up with the game. The only thing you really have going for you is your shot. And, and literally for two and he just kept reiterating and going over and over and over. And Gensel sat to our right. Uh, Bill Butters was sitting to our left. Oh, my goodness. And they just sat there. And my dad, I, my dad, I don't know how he was. You could, I could tell smoke was coming out of his ears. He just said, I would why, have why 20 minutes into it, not two and a half why, hours. Why did you call this here? Sure, we don't understand sure. why you're here. Well, you know, maybe if he goes and plays a year of juniors, we'll give him, like, a 10% or something scholarship or oh something like that. And I, at God. this point, I had already had I, – I, Thank God I didn't grow up a huge Gopher fan. Being in Bloomington, mm-hmm. I was a North Stars guy. Mm-hmm. That was my team. So sure. I just kind of was like, well, that was, you know, I, I'm sure it's a little disheartened. Uh, doesn't, not nice or not fun to hear sure. negative stuff about yourself for two and a half hours. So um, walked out of there and actually Billy Butters uh, chased us out to the car. And, oh, Mark, just do me a favor. Uh, give me a call when you get your decision. Just give me give me a week or two weeks before you make your decision. I was like, yeah, yeah, right. Uh, it's over. I'm, I'm going to go. Play for a guy that one thinks I'm a sentiment and clearly thinks I'm a horse crap hockey player. Yeah, he's the one that's got to put me on the ice. Not a chance. Hmm. So, so you knew right there. Oh yeah, that I knew day, right there's no way there, you're there playing for no way. Yeah, and it was funny too because uh, Mikey Anderson, uh, who was recruited, he's my line mate, teammate, growing up my whole life, is still a very good friend of mine. Uh, he was so excited about to hear about the meeting because he, I think, he had already committed to be honest with you at that point to Minnesota and and. He couldn't wait to hear about it, and I told him, and he just his just jaw was on the floor. He just couldn't believe it. And then uh, the the best part of the story is then a, a, a two weeks or so later, uh, going on an official visit to St. Cloud State, and I instantly fell in love with the rink. But Matt Cohen was on that same visit, so oh my uh, we were sitting there waiting for the coaches. I think they're on the practice, so uh, he and myself were just sitting in the lock or up in the uh, stands watching practice, and. I, for some reason, I just decided to tell him the story, and, and I kind of go over and over it. And Matt Cohen looks at me, and goes, "He did the same thing to me. He told me I was too small, I couldn't skate on the uh, uh, Olympic size sheet, I couldn't shoot. The only thing I had going for me was my hands and my passing. He literally did the exact same thing to me and my dad. So we were dying laughing that that's what we did. And, and so we ended up going on to St. Cloud, and we, you know. St- he loved the idea, and I kind of realized that Matt Cohen's a really good hockey player, and he needs a shooter on his wing. Wow. So it was a real easy decision for me to go to St. Cloud. We pretty much decided there, uh, you know, that weekend that that's what we do. Um, uh, the aftermath was pretty funny when I talked to some of my teammates and buddies like Eric Rasmussen, uh, Mikey Anderson, Mike Crowley, all these guys, uh, you know, all asking how it would go and everything. And, and you, you should hear uh, – some of those guys talk about it now of, of what that gopher power play could have looked like. So what would your line have been if you and Colin had both ended up as uh, as gophers? I would think we would have had Rasmussen on our left. Oh, my God. And then, yeah, I mean, <laughs> so that just with the power play right there, you put me, Matt Cohen, Eric Rasmussen, and Mike Crowley, and I don't know. Good luck. Whoever else is on the It didn't matter. 
And, so, yeah. did, and you told me Friday, by the way, too. You said, and I hope that I'm, that I'm not exaggerating this, but not only did Woog basically just undress you for two and a half hours verbally, yeah. but he, he essentially was yelling too. Oh, yeah. That he was that he was almost oh. mad oh. that that he had to break you down, right? Yeah. So you said your dad and you were basically like, "Why is he yelling at yeah. me? Let we, alone we critiquing we me." So figure it out. Well, wasn't yeah. your high school coach uh, Satterdahl? On? Yeah. Did he ever have a discussion with Tom Satterdahl, who was a, maybe along with? Jerry or, with or Kennedy and Osiki, the most respected teammates yeah, that you were would, sitting right down the hall. Yeah, in the say, what, what are your impressions of, of your game? Yeah. And, and, just and, and crazy. Yeah, it's incredible. So, I at any just, point in those two and a half hours, did Gensel or, you know, or Butters, Bill Butters, what a great name. That's yes. a great, did, yeah. great did anybody in that room that, that had seen you play be like, well, you know, he's, he's not a center? Or, or I don't think he, like, did anybody else nope. that had actually scouted you chime in at any point? No. Uh, and, Actually, my dad came up with this theory a little bit later that their head scout was Mark Mazzolini, and he was the head assistant coach at the time. He had just taken the job at Miami of Ohio. So he has a theory, and I actually went to a visit Miami of Ohio uh, for Mazzolini. He has a theory that, that he was he kind of tried to hide because Wu wasn't high on, he didn't really know about Cullen and I, so he just kind of tried to, Slide it under the table, Just sandbag and, and, you two, and, and try to and get, get you guys. A, get to Miami. Well, that's, that's genius that's, if you tried to theory, do that. Yeah, and I, great it's, you know. And how did your two and team it's because he literally did not know a thing about yeah, me. Man. That's funny, unbelievable. St. Cloud State and, did okay with you guys. One of my and, and I'm Mikey Anderson. I'm sorry, I'm telling this, but it's a great story. It is. <laughs> so uh, we we yes. we play in. We hadn't beaten St. Cloud had never beaten Minnesota in Mariucci Arena. In I don't know how many years. Uh, so we're at Mariucci. We're down two nothing in the third period. We came back and won in overtime three two. And Cully assisted on all three of my goals that, huh. that I scored. And you after the, three. after yeah after oh, wow. after the overtime game, Woog looked down at, at Mikey and says, "Guess I picked the wrong Jaguar, huh?" <laughs> he goes, "Mikey, without missing beat." Yep. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what a great I, f you right to yeah. do oh, that. Oh yeah, that felt good. And to have both of you be a part of all three. For both of us, yeah. It was fun for Cully and I to, to, and maybe to have that, that Maybe the other dudes in Ohio laughing his ass off, too. Yeah, Maslin. I understand how well, Doug, I mean, even going back before that with Herbie, and everything, just they always had the, sort of the pick of the litter here in Minnesota. It was always like, we don't even have to recruit. Yeah. Just, they'll just show up at our doorstep. Yeah. But that's just a crazy story of Matt Cullen and yourself. Yeah. Two long NHL careers. Cullen's still this, playing. Yeah, he still is Good going. Lord. But the other brilliance about you, Mark, and the other thing that I like about your honesty with the story that you told me on Friday, and I don't think you have a problem sharing now, is, you know, when I asked you a couple weeks ago, you know, what'd you major in in St. Cloud? You said, uh, hockey, <laughs> right? Uh, you mentioned seven minutes ago or whatever that you didn't love the Golden Gophers. You loved the North Stars, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. you wanted yep. to play in the NHL yep. more than you wanted to play college hockey. Yep. So another reason you went to St. Cloud State is... Because they graduated 11 seniors the year before. So that was another part of the conversation Colin and I were had in the stands when we were being recruited. They had to play us. Right, sure. so you could walk we, right in. We could make mistakes and go back out there and play as opposed right. to you. They're so stacked up with players that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you make a mistake, you can bury it, and God knows when you're going to get your next chance, See, I, especially I, if you think I, you're a centerman. You know, again, I would have loved, <laughs> all of us, I think, would have loved to be in, to experience what you experienced, being recruited, being, like, courted. Oh, yeah, it's amazing. Uh, but, AJ, we were talking about this in Abbott's office a week ago about uh, the Dolmans, about how Isaiah, oh, sure. Dol Isaiah Dolman right. made a choice that I would not have made. Again, everybody can live their life however they want, but I can't imagine being so good at high school basketball that you, you can go to some of the top schools in the country and then picking one where you're never going to play. Like, if I'm Isaiah Dolman, I would have rather come to the U and, and gotten some minutes mm -hmm. right. instead of playing for Izzo and literally just wearing, Barely, wearing the jersey that for That is Walmart. a great where-have-you-gone, whatever-happened-to-you right. story. Uh, sure, Isaiah he was, was one of the most prolific scorers yes. in the history of Minnesota high school basketball. Correct. but And his brother, his brother up, went to Wofford. Right, went to right. a smaller school and got tons of time, made yeah. the NCAA tournament. He's sure. still playing overseas. Right. <laughs> I just I can't imagine not having that be the number one thing is – I want, want to play. To play. Yeah. You only get to play college sports once, or pro sports for that matter, once. To, to me, that is my that would if if I'm a high school recruit, my number one priority is where am I playing? How often? Am I, how mm -hmm. often am I playing? Mark would have played center. I like that <laughs> on the ninth line for the University of Minnesota. Right. Right. Doesn't he? Uh, um, isn't it? The, uh, 
symptomatic, though, of the teenage mind to think that you're better than everybody. So just get me in, in that jersey, and I'm going to make yeah. the starting lineup. Right. And he oh, never, yeah. he, right. The, and never cracked that lineup. Well, no, the there's State. a ton of stories like that about players that, that grew up huge Gopher fans and that didn't even fill out. You know, they used to send a recruiting form that you kind of fill out, and you know, if you're interested, you send it back. If you're not, you just kind of don't send it back. Yeah. And, uh, that, that wouldn't even fill out another, didn't even take another phone call. They were just there. That's it. I'm going to be a gopher and they end up getting wow. buried. Yeah. There's a ton, a that probably ton happens of stories all over yeah. the country, right? All you want to do is play for Notre yeah. Dame football it's, it's your or dream. Dream. basketball and, and, yeah. then it ends and up, you just sit there. You never play. Well, right. the per- so that's not even playing yeah. though. That's no. just, you, you, anybody can wear the jersey. Mm-hmm. That was actually playing would be amazing. The kid I went to high school with, Adam Boone, he went to North Carolina. Right. He right. didn't play because they brought in another freshman point guard. Morrison something who played over him. He transferred. Yeah. And he was the bee's knee. He was. Adam Boone. Oh, play. God. Great yeah. player. He's one of the best Minnesota basketball yeah. players of all time. Well, it's mm-hmm. just a, a glimpse of what happens. That's a great it's, story. Yeah. Great story, man. Wow. Mm. Thank you, Mark. So you, you and are Cullen, welcome. You and Colin could have been gophers if somebody had actually scouted you and yep. paid attention. Mm. Mm. Hey, we would have maybe just said two nice things. And two and a half hours. One. That's the two and a half hours. Not a, not a 20 joke. minutes would have, I think, yeah. done it. Well, now we're going to go down the, uh, the hallway and get yelled at for the next two and a half hours by Chad yeah. Yeah, nice. come with us. Uh, you you want to Let's do it. That was so much fun. I want to do it again. <laughs> See you tomorrow, Rosie.